The aim of this video is to gain a better understanding of slope fields. Let's begin by exploring the concept of a field. There are lots of practical examples of fields, magnetic, electric and gravitational. Imagine a meteor travelling through space. As the meteor gets closer to the Earth, its path is determined by the Earth's gravitational field and something I'll call the initial conditions, these being its velocity and location. Field lines provide a visual indication of the Earth's gravitational field. Let's apply this understanding to slope fields in the calculus area of study. A point is placed on the Cartesian plane. The path of the point will be determined by the slope field and some initial conditions, in this case the location of the point. The Earth's gravitational field is determined by the mass of the Earth. A slope field is defined by an equation that describes the gradient of some mystery function. I'm calling it a mystery function because at this time we don't know its equation and in some cases it's not analytically possible to determine. But we can produce a path for our point. To explore this idea further let's have a look at an example. A point and its coordinates are displayed on the Cartesian plane. A single vector is being used to indicate the slope of the mystery function providing an indication of the path the point would follow based on its current location. In this example the equation defining our slope field is half the product of the x and y coordinate. So in this case that would be a half times 1 times 1. So our slope vector at the moment has a gradient of a half. If I move it somewhere else in the first quadrant you'll notice that its slope changes. If I move the point parallel to the x-axis the y-coordinate remains the same but our slope vector continues to change because our equation defining the slope is dependent on x. If I move the point parallel to the y-axis so that only its y-point is changing the slope vector continues to change. This tells us that our slope is dependent on both x and y. Now what I'm going to do is place our point over here in quadrant 2. We'll use the geometry trace tool to leave a trail of our point as we follow our slope vector. So it's pointing downwards, so we'll track downwards and we can see that it starts to flatten out. And now that we're in the first quadrant, the product of x and y divided by 2 is positive, so we're now tracking upwards. And we get a shape that kind of looks a bit like a parabola. Let's have a look what would happen if we put our point in quadrant 3. So we'll erase our existing trace, move down to quadrant 3, and you can see that because both x and y are negative down here, the product is positive again. So our slope vector has gone back to a positive slope. And our path is somewhat different because our initial conditions were different. Rather than following our vector in that way, we can show the complete slope field. And you can see our path kind of follows 
give or take my shaky hand, the field. So here we see the equation, the product of my x and y coordinates divided by 2. If I want to put in some initial conditions, and I think I started somewhere about minus 2 and minus 2, you can see a dotted line is produced indicating the path of our point with initial conditions negative 2, negative 2. So my trace wasn't too bad, but let's erase it. And there's the path of a point in that slope field. Now let's see what information we can get about our equation by just studying the slope field. Our slope field is of the form dy dx equals something. Let's highlight a couple of the lines in our slope field. These red highlighted lines all have the same y coordinate, but their x coordinate is different, and so too is the slope of each of those lines. That tells us that our equation defining the slope field is dependent on x. So dy dx changes as x changes. These highlighted lines in our slope field all have the same x coordinate but different y coordinates. We notice that the slope of each of those lines is the same even though their y coordinate has changed. Therefore dy dx must be independent of y. That is dy dx does not change as y changes. We also notice that because all of those lines have the same gradient they're referred to as isoclines. Iso comes from a Greek word meaning equal. Clines comes from a Greek word meaning slope. So isoclines means equal slope. This next set of slope field lines has been highlighted because their gradient is close to zero. They all have the same x coordinate, that is approximately minus 2. That tells us that the gradient is equal to zero when x is equal to minus 2, or thereabouts. Furthermore, we can see that the slope field lines either side indicate that it's more than just a stationary point here, but a minimum turning point. So a possible equation for dy dx might be x plus 2 over 4. We notice the absence of y because our dy dx is independent of y. We also notice that if x equals negative 2 in that equation, we will get dy dx equal to 0. Let's have a look at one more example. Our slope field is defined by some equation dy dx equals the highlighted lines show that as x is changing, the slope is changing, so dy dx changes as x changes. Our next group of highlighted lines show that as y changes, dy dx changes. This is telling us that dy dx is dependent on y this time, as well as x. So dy dx is changing as y changes. There's a couple of other lines, field lines of interest. Once again, we have field lines that indicate a slope of 0. So dy dx is 0 when x is approximately equal to 2. Some more field lines of interest are these highlighted ones. They have a gradient that is almost infinite, really steep, when y is approximately equal to 1. So dy dx is approaching infinity when y is approaching or approximately 1. A possible equation could be dy dx equals x minus 2. Notice that would produce a gradient of 0 when x equals 2. And the gradient would be undefined when y equals 1, consistent with what we've seen. And that the gradient function, or our slope field, 
indicates it is dependent on both x and y. So let's have a look at a sample question. Here we see a slope field and we need to decide which equation is defining this slope field or at least would suit this slope field. Press the pause button on the video and when you hit resume I'll go through the answer. OK, let's see how you went. Let's start by analysing option A. The lines highlighted in the slope field indicate that as x changes, dy dx is changing. As option A does not have an x in it, it cannot be the definition for our slope field. So it's out. Option B. Let's have a look at the slope field lines either side of the x-axis, that is where y equals 0. Option B would suggest that dy dx should equal 0 when y equals 0. And we can see by the slope field lines either side of the x-axis that's not the case. In fact that would support the fact that we should be dividing by y to produce something which is really big. So option B is out. Now let's have a look at option C. If we highlight all the slope field lines surrounding where x equals 0, the slope is almost 0 for a lot of those, but option C would suggest that the slope should almost be undefined. So option C is out. Now, combining the information that we said before, is that we should really be dividing by y, not dividing by x, would indicate that E is out, leaving us with option D. Also supporting our answer for option D is the fact that the slope is almost infinite when y is negative 2. Substituting that in, dy dx equals x over y plus 2, we would see we'd get x divided by 0 for our slope, which would be undefined, and that's pretty much what we've got when y equals negative 2. So, our answer is option D. If you would like to see more videos and or activities, please visit our website at education.ti.com. Thanks for joining us.